Welcome back to Donington Park. Here we go for the final TCR UK race of the season, the final TCT race as well. And what a race we had earlier on. Andy McEwen here, race commentator. This is the voice you normally hear. He's got a face as well, and it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, what a race it was, and what a championship decided we've got in prospect. You know, 11 points in it. Um, James Turkins is losing a lot of weight. He'll be a lot quicker in this race. He was really quite uncompetitive, he was just saying in the first race, because he's, he's 60 kilos lighter for this race. He should be coming forward. Lewis has got a real fire under him at the moment as well to try and somehow overturn this 11-point deficit. It's going to be a fantastic race, I think, arguably race of the season, really. Yeah, absolutely. We're, I was talking to Lewis, actually, after the first race, because he had that third place overall on track. And I was saying that it's these races where things don't quite go for you, where you make mistakes that you learn the most. And this season, we've seen a huge uh, improvement in Lewis's development. He's really come on, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He was always quick. We always knew he was quick. But over a race, you know, he was using his tyres a bit too much, his brakes a bit too much, getting involved in scrapes. He didn't really need to. And it, you could argue at the start of that race the same was true, but he fought back, he didn't let it get to him, and actually came through and scored way more points than he would have ever anticipated at the end of that opening lap he would score. And that's the side of maturity, and that's something that I'm really loving about seeing Lewis grow as a driver. You know, he's only young, by far the youngest driver on the grid, and you can see from now, uh, between now and the start of last season, the rate of improvement and the rate of improvement in his maturity, and that's why he's now fighting for a championship that he wasn't doing 12 months ago. And how often have we seen a Turkington do amazing things in a touring car? Recently, just last week, in fact, fourth time BTCC champion. And this time around, his brother James currently looking... He's, he's such a sort of methodical driver. The way he races, you could see the way he was working in the race and in the first race today, that he knew he wasn't going to win. All he had to do was keep adding the points on, just keep the pressure on Lewis. If he'd done something stupid and fallen off, of course it plays more into Lewis's hands and the pressure's off James. But this one, it's still very much James's race to lose or championship to lose. As long as James is on the podium, it's his. Doesn't matter what Lewis does. He cannot, if he's off the podium, he can if he's on the podium, he can't lose it. Uh, but he's in this very high pressure position in that if he messes up, it's on him. You know, Lewis, all he can do is go out and try and win, but it's on James to make sure that he keeps his head and doesn't make any mistakes. That's easier said than done. We've got the biggest grid we've had all year here um, and some, some drivers in those TCT cars that are out to prove a point. And they don't really mind what's going on in this TCR championship. They'll try and be respectful if they can. But as we saw on the first lap of the previous race, you know, 13 into one doesn't always go. There'll be a bit of contact sometimes. And it's almost a bit of a lottery as to who comes out worse from that. But yeah, James by and large, keeps himself out of trouble, much like his brother does. Um, you could argue maybe was a bit too cautious towards the end of the previous race. He could have done without losing that extra couple of positions, particularly to Daryl. Um, but I spoke to him just now, and he's feeling a lot more ready for this one. He feels a lot more confident that he can go forward this time rather than be watching his mirrors for 25 minutes. Yeah, no, we're just waiting for the cars to come onto the grid right now. You can probably hear them all flying around going through the pits at the moment as they get ready. They should be joining us very, very soon. There's a lot of activity here. As Andy was saying, this is the biggest group we've had this season, and it's nice to see this... Uh, variety on track as well having Alex Morgan back in the McGann we saw him last year at Brands Hatch and it was a kind of a it was a very short visit of his yeah but this is basically a new car I mean it's been completely overhauled since then he's been winning races and being really successful in TCR Europe in this car actually um, and as we saw in the previous race not only is it more reliable it's quicker it handles better they're getting more horsepower from it now and that will really help around here he was also helped by the fact he had no weight, the same for Adam Morgan as well. So that will all start to shift around now too. But it's nice to see the rate of development of that car and that he can use things like TCR UK as glorified testing in a way, but also a, an extra chance to get into a race situation and see what they can learn. Yeah, absolutely. We're just talking about Morgans. We've got a Morgan pulling into the side of us right now. This is the other Morgan of the two. So if we think about uh, about the Morgans we have out on track, I mean, we talk about Adam Morgan. This is, uh, Adam Morgan is a driver who we've seen very much so in British touring car over the years. Very, very fast driver, very competitive. BTCC race winner numerous times as well. And it's great to have this variety of people out on track and we see how they compare when it's uh, compared to direct comparison to a TCR driver. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that the TCR drivers really enjoy. You know, Adam is one of those benchmark drivers. He's come into the series this weekend immediately on the pace. And that sort of tells the Lewis's and James's of the world, OK, that's where I need to be. You know, that's the target. And it's actually really important for drivers to have that. You know, if they, if they were racing every week and winning every race, they can maybe drive at 80% and win a race. And they're learning nothing. But having people like Adam and Alex here this weekend, and we've had other drivers. Ollie Taylor, of course, did the first round earlier this year. Ash Sutton last year. Yeah, they're quick. They're hard to beat. But if you can get close to them, you're really achieving something and you're learning all the time. Absolutely. Let's take a little wander, if we can, and have a look up the grid now. So we've got the two Morgans leading. 
leading the way, of course, for that one, two, because it's exact, uh, the, 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 the grid lineup here is exactly from the result from race number one of the day. So then we go a little bit further back and we talk about the guy who was really chomping at the bit for the championship, Lewis Kent. We've mentioned him about how he's really improved as a driver over the course of, of the last two seasons within TCR and TCT this year. And it is so impressive to see what he can do in that car. His race pace is the thing that has really, really improved noticeably. And it's a car that goes well here. Remember, the first time we visited Donington Park, um, he was the one to beat. He was the pace setter this, uh, this circuit. He's showing that sort of pace again this weekend. He's going to be on it from the start full attack and he's got the speed to do it as well. Absolutely. Now if we go a little bit further back we can see the team hard cars. Now they've got three cars here at the moment and it's looking really really good this car out on track. It is and Josh Coggan's pace in the second half of that first race in particular was really impressive until I said as much and then he threw it into the gravel trap but uh, they're really quick and they're getting quicker with every session and now that the track is fully dry that can only benefit them as well as the rest of the grid. Absolutely. I'm going to let you run off because I know you've got to go straight to the commentary so we'll catch up with Andy in just a bit. Let's go and speak to a couple of the drivers though. I'm going going to try and head down here as far as we can because I'd like to speak, if we can, to James Turkington. So we know he's leading the championship at the moment and it is really all on him. All eyes on James Turkington. Last weekend, as you mentioned in the British Touring Car, his brother claimed his fourth title and James is currently sitting in the car right now trying to keep focus, trying to get his focus and keep it there because he knows he's got a long way up the track to go. But he also knows that all he has to do is just keep his eye in, really, and uh, get some points on so James, uh, if we have a very, very quick chat with you, how are you doing? I know it's uh, last minute and you're trying to keep your mind in order, but currently leading the championship, looking really good out on track as well. That first race seemed to me like you were just trying to bag some points and keep, keep the pressure on. To be honest, we with the weight in this one, so it's good to get, get rid of 60 kilos, so yeah. Up for this one. Yeah, and actually look ahead at the track, you know where Lewis is down there, but the other cars in the way, but they're sort of an irrelevance to you, you don't have to worry about those cars. Yeah, we, we don't have to worry too much about them, but obviously we want to try to go as, as far forward as we can. Now, I think 11 points is a buffer at the minute, so you know what you've got to do, and I'm sure as the race progresses, your team will be uh, telling you. What is your game plan? Well, we need to try, stay out of trouble and try to bag as many points as can, because anything can happen at, at any stage, so we just need to try to cover all bases as much as possible. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. There we go. We'll let uh, James get his thoughts back in order because uh, I know he's got to put his mesh back up. But it's, um, it's one of these things they try to go through their own rituals before the race and then you get somebody to interrupt them. It is all to play for for James. He knows he has currently got it if he can just stay out of trouble. And that is a big thing. To his left, just slightly ahead of him, we've got one of the Neils. Very famous names when it comes to touring car racing, Turkington and Neil. Henry Neil here in one of their older touring cars. But we also have his brother. Will is out on track to a little bit further back down there. We're going to keep going, though, because Lewis is out of the car, so we're going to go and quickly um, have a few words with Lewis because we know what he's got to do. It's a very busy grid. It's good to see so many people have come out today to Donington to uh, catch up with the drivers and see some of this racing here. A couple of Team Hard guys out. Nice to see uh, three Team Hards out on track. Really, really... Uh, big name when it comes to, uh, to racing and touring cars as well, especially with a British touring car. Going to quickly grab Lewis as well. He's um, shaking hands with all his fans. Lewis, you've only got, maybe not fans, just uh, rivals, friends. What do you call them? <laughs> Everyone I know. <laughs> Everyone you know is coming up to say good luck. Now, when it looks at track position, you've got, you've got it. You've got the track position right now. I was just walking back from James Turkett in two cars behind you on track here. I know it's not right with, uh, with actual positions on track itself, but you've just got to get forward, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the main aim. Um, we're going to have to try and get the jump on these two in front of us. We're just going to have to try and put as many cars in between me and James as we can. I think it's 11 points now, so he needs to come third or lower, which for us isn't isn't far away as long as we can win it. We're, we're, we're aiming for that. We've got less weight on now. We were quick in that last one. We showed our pace. So with the, uh, with the weight on the boys in the front and without any weight in us, uh, we're, we're going to be a lot quicker. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can just push on forward. But, of course, with this one, it's really important that you stay in the race, isn't it? Because you might as well just, you know, bide your time, not do anything stupid, particularly for the first 10, 15 minutes or so, because anything can happen when it comes to touring car racing. Yeah, yeah. If I get a good start and I can get one or two places, or if I can get both of them off the start, that'd be perfect. Um, if I get one of them off the start and I sit behind one of them, it's 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 all right. I can I can keep it keep it there until the last couple of laps. I don't don't really want to be doing anything silly. Um, but obviously, if it comes down to the last lap, then I'm gonna have to put a move in and, and just hope for the best. So, how are you feeling on a scale of one to ten nerves? Are you pretty calm? Um, they're kicking in a little bit now. Uh, as I was driving around, it was it was a little bit little bit kicking in, but. 
No, I, I'm, I don't really get nervous too much. Um, it's just another race for me. It's just another another time going around in the car. So just going to take it like I do every other time and uh, drive my best. If you could take it as we stand, stand right now, if you could maybe analyse your career path over the last two years when it comes to TCT and TCR, how would you how would you rate it? It's been good. It's been good. It obviously, you can't put a number on it. Um, you have ups and downs in motorsport. Every, everything like that happens. So. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a very fun, interesting path for us. Uh, we've had we've had lots of highs, lots of lows, um, and I think this is probably one of the biggest highs we've had. So, after this race, I'll tell you how how good it has been. But um, yeah, hopefully it can be the best we've we can put out. And you've raced in Spa. There's a lot of people here again at Donington Park. It's great to see so many fans have come out. Yeah, exactly. It just shows that the championship. Everyone puts a bad name on the championship where it hasn't got as many cars as most other places, but. At the end of the day, it, we're, we're all still racing. We're all still putting the money out there. We're all still going racing, um, and it, it brings out quite a lot of spectators. So, it's not like it's not as bad as everyone says. It is a very good championship. It's very nice, and it's a lot more of a family atmosphere than than a an elbows out posh championship. It's a nice family atmosphere, and um, yeah, it's really enjoyable. You get your mind into gear, and we'll catch up with you later on. Good luck. Thank you. There you go, Lewis Kent, one of the two drivers up for the title at this stage, as we know. I'm going to quickly run back here because we. I'm going to start racing in around about 10 minutes time, just under 10 minutes is the uh, schedule here. And I'm going to go and speak to Henry Neal. I want to find out his thoughts of what happened in race one. If you cast your minds back to what happened in race one, there was that little moment, wasn't there, where he came together with Darrell Wilson. Now, I'm going to dive on in and see if we can get a little word with Henry, who uh, normally is quite up for talking. He is a Neal after all. Right, OK, I'm going to just race through the, the mesh out of the way so um, I can never do these messages you know that tell me about what happened in race one because I spoke to you off camera didn't I about what what you thought was going on with with Darrell and why that happened what were your thoughts uh, yeah mate uh, obviously got a good start got away and uh, Darrell was keeping me uh, pretty on, on on the game um, in P2 he was chasing me down he was looking quick you know uh, but obviously I've seen the ball come through that he'd had a jump start and he'd had a penalty and obviously you know I'm, he's in TCR UK I'm in TCT so I didn't think he would uh, you know, attack too aggressively, and especially when he's got a drive through to take. So I seen he had a slightly better exit out McLean, so I just parked the car in the middle of the track, um, and all that happened. He just basically got into my rear bumper and kept his foot in and turned me around. Uh, I can't see why he's done that, you know. He's apologised, and me and him are cool now. But at the end of the day, it's cost me a win. So positives to take from it, you know. We still fought back up the, um, got the back of the pack, got up to P6, which puts us in a good place for this one. Uh, and now we've got the 30 kilos out. We've got about eight kilos in, so I'll be going for the win. I'm sure you will. Good luck. So there you go. Henry is going to go for the win as, well, he's a Neil, isn't he? They only ever go for the win, don't they? They never go for second best. That's the way they have been brought up, and that's exactly what he's going to do. And if we glance a little bit further back along the track, we can't go much further, but you can probably make out just, oh, it's quite, a long way back, actually, you might be able to make out his brother. So Will Neal is out here at the track, had a bit of a first race. Not all his problems, but you know, it's just what happens out in touring car racing. As we see further back, such an impressive grid here so far. With 13 cars out on track, and uh, it is very, very busy out here too. I'm just going to dive around again because I think it's worth having a look at these, uh, these team hard cars. They are very, very nice looking cars. Coggan just here to your right hand side. And uh, he is, um, well, he's currently ahead on track of James Turkington. So he's got a big part to play in this story, you believe, don't you? Coggan may, may just uh, interfere or he may get out of the way. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm sure there would have been conversations going up and down the grid earlier on. So Josh, they're really, really staying out of the way. That's the idea. And then Darren Lewis up ahead to the left hand side, one place back from Lewis Kent on track. Now these cars, we've seen a fair bit over the course of the years of course. Uh, we're going back down to the start and the two Morgans leading on here. So the two Morgans leading the way. Alex Morgan to your left as you look right now. Adam Morgan ahead on the right hand side. And I think we're pretty much uh, done and dusted when it comes to the intros. I'm not going to go and chat to Adam at the moment because uh, we chatted to him at the end of that first race. He was really happy to get that win. It was a win that he totally deserved as well, but you know, kind of handed to him in many ways because of the other antics going on track. Uh, Lewis now getting into the car, leaving it very much lastminute.com. Other websites are available, but in he gets. He's going to attach the steering wheel. The grid is clearing. We are ready to get going here for the final time for 2019 for the TCT, for TCR UK. We are going to have a champion, the second champion 
of the series. Dan Lloyd, the current champion, he's going to be leaving that title behind after this race. But which way is it going to go? Is it going to go to a Turkington? Is it going to go to a Kent? We're going to find out. Over to our race commentator, Andy McEwen. Well, whoever it goes to, Brian, I think it is a name that we'll see on touring car grids for quite some time because both Lewis and James are, you know, a pair of these up and coming young drivers, but they have such potential to be future stars of touring car racing, be that in TCR or other touring car arenas around the world. Uh, and they've both proven that this year. And it's going to be a thrilling contest, this. 11 points in it. Uh, there are multiple points permutations. We won't get too bogged in too many of them just now. But essentially, um, Lewis Kent must, of course, outscore James Turkins by 11 points. He can end the season tied with James and still be the champion because he has more wins. So if uh, two drivers end the season tied on points, then the count back is based on who has the most wins. If that's a tie, it's second place is likewise all the way down until you find a tiebreaker. Um, they would have different amounts of wins, though, so it would come down to wins and Lewis would win it. So in order to outscore him by 11 points, realistically, although not, this is not completely uh, true, but realistically, if he wins the race, Lewis, that gives him half a chance. Anything less than that, it will be tricky. However, if James is on the podium, then it doesn't matter what Lewis does, James will be the champion. There is a 10-point swing between first and third within the TCR class, um, and that wouldn't be enough. So as long as James Turkington's on the podium, he will be the champion. If he's not on the podium, then we get the calculator out, and uh, my brain starts to fry because I can I can commentate or calculate, but doing the same the two things at the same time is not always easy. Um, but we'll do our best for you, and uh, we'll get the, the first few laps out of the way first, I think, before we start getting too bogged down in championship points. One last um, point about points, though. Um, news that came to be between races. Alex Morgan, as a late entry into the championship, just for this last round, uh, he'd only paid an entry for this final round, um, is not eligible for points within TCR. So in a, in a way, you could, he's running in the TCR class, but uh, is not eligible for points. This is to stop teams you know, bringing in extra drivers all of a sudden at the last round, which could skew with the, the championship battle. So, Alex, you can sort of delete from the results. Now, the calculations we made in the first race, as it happens, are still correct. It's still 11 points between uh, Lewis Kent and James Turkington, in, in uh, Turkington's favour, of course. Um, but that actually would have, that did change initially, and then it also means qualifying points changed. So it's worked out the same. It's still 11 points, but you can delete Alex Morgan, this is not Adam Morgan, Alex Morgan, um, from the points permutations. So even if he is ahead of our championship contenders or in between them, it makes no difference. He essentially is not part of the TCR class as far as point scoring is concerned. But he is, of course, in a TCR car looking for a win in TCR UK, which he came very close to um, in the previous round, uh, but uh, missed out by just the one position with Adam Morgan managing to hang on till the end. Um, in uh, what was a, a really, really popular win, actually. Adam Morgan, a popular driver, um, and uh, has built up something of a, of a reputation for himself over recent years in um, the BTCC. And uh, that means that he's got quite the following. And uh, he's a very popular addition to the uh, the uh, grid here this weekend. We look like we've got a full quota of cars as well, which is good, despite a few bumps and scrapes along the way in race one. The uh, I think everyone did get to the end, at least without any mechanical dramas, including Richard Woods, whose Ford has been um, held back by mechanical issues all year, really. We should have seen it out a couple of times earlier on this season, but uh, unfortunately that wasn't, uh, wasn't to be. The weight shifts around now as well, of course. James Turkington loses a whole chunk of weight. He was the championship leader coming into this weekend and a double winner in TCR last time out as well, of course. So um, he was carrying 60 kilos of success ballast coming into this weekend, all of which... He now essentially passes over, very gratefully, he said to me before, uh, to his teammate Adam Morgan, who now, of course, as the winner of the previous race, gains all of this extra weight. So James Turkington is 60 kilos lighter in this race than he was in the previous race. That explains why he was relatively uncompetitive, by his standards at least, in race number one, um, because when you're looking that sort of weight around, that will, of course, have quite a drastic effect on your performance. So green flag lap then getting underway. As you can see, Richard Woods again has struggled to get that car moving. It's fired up because it's crawled forward quite a long way. Has he now got it working? I think he might have. I thought I'd put the curse of the commentator on him as well as I did to Josh Coggan in the previous race by saying that that car had been working quite well lately. But uh, they're struggling to fire it up. Once it gets fired up, it seems to be absolutely fine. 
So the grid then, as Bryn said, is based upon the result from the previous race. Uh, and Adam Morgan therefore makes it an all Morgan front row. Adam Morgan on pole in the Cooper. Alex Morgan in the McGann, but does not score points. And that might turn out to be important later. Then third position on the grid is Lewis Kent. 11 points off championship leader James Turkington. And this is his last opportunity to take points away from him and try and snatch the championship away from the Northern Irishman. He will have Darren Lewis alongside him. Darren is the first of the, the uh, Dunlop Touring Car Trophy drivers. Was out that came on really strong in the second half of that previous race uh, before he binned it into the gravel trap. He was able to rejoin, still in fourth. Uh, and he's got his teammate Josh Coggan uh, alongside him. Sorry, it was Coggan that went off, but Ben Barber, but Lewis inheriting the TCT win as a result. So Lewis fourth, Coggan fifth, and then Henry Neal, another one to watch for. Uh, he also loses quite a substantial amount of success ballast now because he was uh, put there for, on the podium at uh, Brands Hatch in the overall rankings. And so he should also benefit from that, although he was pretty pacey anyway, wasn't he? He was on full position after the flat uh, first race. So he lines up sixth with his uh, sparring partner, isn't really the right word, is it? Tara Wilson, uh, in theory, alongside him. And uh, that will be, uh, doesn't appear to be the case, though, because there's a bit of separation between the two of them. So Wilson, for some reason, ah, yes, five, five place grid penalty, there we go. Uh, five place grid penalty has been handed out to Daryl Wilson. That's for the contact that he had with Henry Neal. So actually, uh, Henry Neal has James Turkington next behind him, uh, followed by Rick, uh, Richard Woods and then Nick Halstead. So Woods will, of course, now have to go to the back of the grid because he was late leaving the dummy grid at the start of his lap. So the grid a little bit shuffled around from what we maybe expected. And that puts Daryl Wilson a bit further back than he should be, but he's got good speed this weekend. And actually didn't really pick up any uh, huge success ballast because although he had the pace to potentially win the first race, that contact and subsequent um, penalty that he had to serve actually for a jump start, not for the contact, uh, putting a lot further down the order than he probably should have been. So he should also have similar pace to Henry Neal in this race. Here we go then, the Morgans on the front row, Lewis Kent lining up third and realistically has to win this race to have any real chance, I think, of beating James Turkington. But as long as Turkington's on the podium, He's the champion regardless. Anything more complex than that we'll get into over the next 23 minutes plus one lap as the final round of the 2019 TCR UK Championship at the Dunlop Tyres Touring Car Trophy is about to get underway. Adam Morgan and Alex Morgan share the front row of the grid. Keep an eye on Lewis Kent from third. The lights go out. Away they go. Even start from the front row then by the looks of it. Looks as though Daryl Wilson's away well further back too. It's wheel to wheel though between the Cooper and the McGann going into the first corner. Adam Morgan though has the inside line. That should be where the grip is in these now dry conditions. Stuart Lines is out wide. Sideways there for one of the team hard cars. Henry Neal, no Nick Halstead, sorry is out on the grass a little bit wide. That sideways team hard car was right in front of James Turk and it's side by side for the race lead though, right in front of Lewis Kent, who wants to try and get involved if he can without getting involved in any contact. Adam Morgan holds on to the lead, Kent is sideways and that cost him any chance of moving through to second position. Is everybody else safely through the old hairpin? I didn't hear any screeching of tyres, so I think they're all through okay. And it is still in grid order at the front then. Adam Morgan from Alex Morgan, those two cars now significantly heavier than they were this morning though, with Lewis Kent in third position, Henry Neal fourth, then the team hard car, so James Turkington still where he was, but critically has another TCR car behind him in the shape of Daryl Wilson, who could start taking some points away from him. He is the, uh, and of course he's got Nick Halstead behind now as well, hasn't he? So. That's going to be interesting to see whether James is able to go forward or whether this turns into another defensive drive from the championship leader. Down into the chicane then. End of what has been a tense but thankfully drama-free opening lap. And it's the Morgans out in front. Now Alex Morgan was every bit as quick as Adam in the early stages, particularly in race one. But uh, let's see what he's able to do in this second race. Not a huge amount of weight difference between the two of them. Henry Neal, though, is on an absolute mission and dives up the inside of Lewis Kent. Moves into third place overall, but since that's a TCT car, has no bearing at all on Lewis Kent's point. He's still second place in class at the moment, with Adam Morgan, the class leader. Of course, setting the fastest lap on the opening lap of the race. Now, if Lewis Kent is sensible here, he'll probably sit behind Henry for a few laps and let Henry prize the door open for him. Let Henry sort of do most of the hard work, overtaking-wise, for Lewis, and then he can maybe just follow through on his coattails. That's the plan, anyway. Let's see whether that's what happens. Up through Swans Curve they go into the right-hander at the top of the hill at McLean's. Lewis Kent then fourth place overall. That is still second of the points scoring TCR UK cars. Lewis makes his way onto that uh, back straight then once again. 
dropping back actually from Henry at this stage, so maybe just uh, taking it easy. He did say he would take it easy, didn't he, in the early stages, and then if he needs to make a move, <laughs> he'll go for it and hope for the best, were essentially the words that he said on the grid to uh, Bryn Lucas a few minutes ago. So it could be that this is a fairly measured drive for the time being from Lewis Kemp, but he's actually falling back into the clutches at the moment of the team hard cars. Uh, then it is uh, James Turkington, just ahead of Daryl Wilson, uh, still running then in the same positions as they were a lap ago, actually. The only changes, really, were a little bit further behind them. My timing screen got a bit loopy and says that Stuart Lyons is in second place, which is not the case. That's better. It is Morgan from Morgan from Henry Neal, the top three. And Henry Neal is the quickest of the three. So the fastest lap that time around, 1 million 11.866. And that was about four or five tenths quicker than the race leader. Henry is lighter than them. He's also rather fired up after what happened in the opening race between himself and Daryl Wilson, who, from his point of view at least, thankfully, he's left behind in this race. Nick Halstead, though, actually, has now been credited with the fastest lap, which he hasn't got, so that's another timing glitch, I'm afraid. But quite a lot of rain this weekend, some water maybe getting into the uh, timing system. Team hard cars at play now. That's Josh Coggan ahead of Darren Lewis, which is not the order in which they lined up. Darren Lewis was ahead on the grid. Are they being caught by James Turkington and Daryl Wilson? It looks like maybe they are, not on the previous lap, but now that they're starting to battle amongst each other, that is bringing those two TCR cars onto their tail. James Turkington doesn't really need to get involved with them particularly. At the moment, he's running OK. He's uh, fourth place in TCR class. He's the third point scorer in TCR car. That would be enough for the championship. If he loses one more place, then it's in jeopardy. If finish his fourth in class and Lewis were to win it then Kent would be the champion so this is the pressure here for James Turkington it may be for a position a bit lower down the order than ordinarily we'd see him fighting for uh, but yeah right now it would be uh, advantage Turkington in the championship and the gap is coming down with Kent ahead of him at the moment Henry Neal could yet make more places and this could open up the door for Lewis Kent but remember this McGann with whom they're battling being driven by Alex Morgan at the moment is not eligible for points so even if Kent gets ahead of him, it makes no real difference for the time being, other than it gets him onto the coattails of Adam Morgan, and that's a different story. Three McLean's then up the hill, the two green machines together, James Turkington and Daryl Wilson. Keep an eye to Will Neal as well. Will Neal's coming through from the very back of the grid, already into 10th uh, position by the end of the previous lap, and catching the cars in front of him. So once again, these team card cars are sort of flirting with having a battle with each other. If that starts to happen, almost applies the pressure to James Turkington more than... Right now, he's actually quite happy. He seems to have the measure of Wilson. He's not stuck right on the boot lid of the team hard cars in front and therefore risking getting involved with their accident if it were to happen. Which it may do here because here comes Lewis on the inside and Coggan turns across the nose of his teammate. No quarter given whatsoever between the two Passats. And you see what I mean now? This brings Turkinson onto their tail, which looks great, but he really doesn't want to get involved with this scrap. They're not in the same class as him. And right now he's in a championship winning position. But the way that those team hard cards, cars are being driven, is probably not filling it with confidence. Turkington sideways this time through the old heaven, and this gives Wilson a run. And Daryl Wilson is attacking for the position, and this could be disastrous for Turkington's championship. Daryl Wilson around the outside, that'll give him the inside line for McLean's. He's done it already. Daryl Wilson is ahead, and that puts him up into fourth place in class. He will score third place points, though, as I said, because of this uh, Alex Morgan um, non point scoring McGann. And that means that Turkington is off the podium places. Now, right now it's OK, but if Kent were to get the class lead away from Adam Morgan, Lewis Kent, by our reckoning, would be the champion. Just five points in it now. Lewis Kent is five points behind James Turkington. If he gets the lead, that's worth seven more points. And look, it's all changed again. Henry Neal has got past Alex Morgan. He's got past Adam Morgan. He leads the way. And now there's only one car between Lewis Kent and the TCR class leader, Adam, Adam Morgan. I knew that would confuse me this weekend. And the Sicily Motorsport prepared, Maximum Motorsport sponsored, number 33, Cupra, is now the driver that could have a real bearing on this championship fight. I was speaking to Sicily Motorsport's team owner, uh, Norman Burgess, between races, and he said that the whole reason he wanted Adam here was to try and win the team's championship. Well, actually, he's now the man that holds James Turkington's driver's championship destiny in his hands. If he succumbs to the pressure here from Lewis Kent, that could be game over for his teammates' championship hopes. Morgan, though, both of the Morgans actually are dealing with this extra ballast today rather well, aren't they? In the, this uh, second race, those cars should be probably quite a bit slower than they are with the extra weight they've uh, taken on board. That car's going extremely slowly, though. In fact, it's going nowhere. Richard Woods possibly out of the race. Looks like the focus is being pushed into the garage. That's a shame. The S2000 car going no further. 
Right then, so Henry Neal leads. He's also therefore the TCT leader in this race. Adam Morgan is second and leads in TCR UK. And then Lewis Kent, fourth place overall, needs to clear this McGann as quickly as he can, get after Adam Morgan in front. Behind, James Turkington is sort of staying with Daryl Wilson, who again has good pace in this race. He looks set to start battling away with the Coggan and Lewis-driven uh, Passat. Uh, yeah, they're still in the same order, then Coggan ahead. Darren Lewis, Josh Coggan, a contender for the championship this year, and we'll race winner in the VW Racing Cup. Is Kent though, is he having a look? Well, he had a look, but he didn't commit to the move into the old hairpin. 15 minutes plus a lap to go, so right now is not the time for desperation, but that 15 minutes will go by remarkably quickly if your name is Lewis Kent. It'll go by remarkably slowly if your name is James Turkington, because there's really very little that Turkington can do here, unless he can find a way back ahead of Darrell Wilson. As it stands then, Kent five points behind, is so tense. This is the, the, the second season of TCR UK and of course the first time it's gone right down to the last race and it is delivering now all of the tension you'd expect from a last race decider. Henry Neal though has gone. He looks good for the overall race victory and uh, he is already the most successful TCT driver this year with more uh, class wins than anybody else. And, uh, as though he's probably going to be able to add another one to the tally this weekend. It is all about the cars behind him. Lewis Kent can he do this? He needs to overtake the next two cars in front of him, or somehow at least put himself ahead of the green and white Cooper of Adam Morgan, and then provisionally he would be the champion. There's Darrell Wilson then in the Vauxhall Astra, which has had a new lease of life this weekend. The assistance he's been given by those German engineers that have come over to help him has worked wonders. And uh, as I think I mentioned in race one, his qualifying time yesterday was six tenths quicker than his qualifying time from 12 months ago, which was a session that took place in very similar conditions, uh, i.e. cold and grey, but a dry circuit. There's Kent having a look, another lock. We've been locking up those brakes quite a lot, I've noticed, into Redgate, into McLean's, and maybe that's just a brake bias thing, but let's hope he's not overcooking those brakes, because we all know that that can prove to be disastrous come the closing stages of a race. But Donington, not a circuit that punishes the brakes as hard as some, maybe, but uh, you still need them to be operating at maximum capacity if you're going to start making lunges and outbreaking people, which is exactly what he needs to start trying to do. But still a bit of separation between the two Morgans at the moment, so Alex Morgan, not getting held up by Adam, is able to drive his own lines more or less and just move to defend when he needs to. Lewis, though, does he go for a dive into Redgate? Not this time, he doesn't. Hyundai stays in line behind, still fourth place overall. Behind, though, I think we've had some changing. Yeah, Darren Lewis and Darrell Wilson have both got ahead of Josh Coggan. So Josh Coggan's gone from fifth down to seventh, and that means that James Turkington now has a car between himself and the next potential TCR car that he could overtake, which again could all prove to be significant in about 13 minutes time. That's the old hairpin then. Morgan and the Adam variety starting to get away now from this ever intensifying battle that's going on behind him. There's your race leader, Neil. There's Adam Morgan. Here comes Lewis Kent, and again locks the rear brakes as he turns into McLean's, but takes the wide line in this time to try and get the tight line out. Can he get up the inside line? This is what Darrell Wilson tried to do to Henry Neal in race one, and that ended in contact. Thankfully, these two keep it clean, but now all of a sudden, Lewis Kent has a real sense of purpose about him. He's going up the inside. He's got two wheels on the grass. Somehow finds some traction, but not quite enough, and Alex Morgan still fends him off. And now that the McGann is defending, they're losing losing more time to Adam Morgan, and that's the driver that Kent needs to be in front of. So this, he, he needs to get past Alex Morgan, but he needs to do it quickly, because the more defensive driving we see from Alex, the bigger that gap will become, and the harder it will be for Kent to uh, overcome the deficit into Redgate, and again, just shows his nose. But that McGann is good on the brakes, isn't it? Certainly he's a bit more stable than the Hyundai is. To the right-hander they go, and he changes further back. Not really. Will Neal's into ninth now, ahead of uh, Paul Taylor in the third of the team hard perhaps, but uh, only affects TCT positions and Lewis Kent now goes for it up the inside and goes through into the old hairpin. Can he stop the car just about? Alex Morgan, no, he's run wide onto the grass and Morgan might get him back. He will get him back and uh, well, that was a brave move to make, but he just couldn't quite get the car stopped in time. He got onto the dirt and now he'll have mud all over his tyres and that car wasn't exactly handling well anyway. You can see the opposite lot there as he throws the car into McLean's corner. Briefly, he was into third position, but he wasn't able to hold on to it. A mistake there for Coggan in the background, but concerningly, James Turkington just isn't able to go after the cars in front, is he? Despite the reduction in weight that he's had for this race, he just doesn't seem to have the pace that he needs. He was at the start of the lap about, well, six tenths behind Coggan. So maybe it was a mistake in the first half of the lap, because he was certainly further back than that when we just caught a, a glimpse of him in the background. 
I'm into the second half of the race now, though. And the other gap we need to watch is between the Morgans, because that's going out now. It's two seconds between the two of them. Lewis Kent again looks to the inside, but as we spotted a lap or so ago, that McGann stops really well. It turns in. It's got a good front end on it. It's been completely reworked since we last saw it uh, just over 12 months ago by the Flipwich Motorsport squad. And uh, Alex Morgan is driving it better than ever. Alex always what a good driver, though. Came through one mate racing in, uh, in Seat Coopers, actually, in the Seat Bayon Euro Cup winning races in a championship front runner there before switching to TCR at the start of last season. Oh, well, actually, partway through the season before that, I think it was. And, uh, well, he's fending off Lewis Kent quite nicely for the time being. Hyundai looks quicker, but he can't. He's not quick enough. He's not good enough where it counts. Under brakes. He just can't seem to get this door open again. He had a chance here, didn't he? With that tight line through Coppice Corner, but just couldn't get the overlap. And the same is true on this lap then. Adam Morgan getting away even further now, I'd say. And that will be not improving the mood of the young Essex lad behind the wheel of the Hyundai i30 NTCR. The English chicane he goes with the 38 machine. It's sideways again, even there, <laughs> under, under throttle. He does seem to have that car set up quite soft. I've always noticed quite a bit of body roll from that car. Likes to throw it into the corners at funny angles, which looks great, but not always great for tyres, apart from anything else. And always the quickest way around the corner. Lewis seems to make it work for him enough for the time being still needs to get ahead of Adam Morgan to win the championship unless James Turkington were to lose any more places to TCR cars which is unlikely he's got about six seconds in hand and a couple of positions in hand those all positions that is uh, between himself and Nick Halstead the remaining TCR UK entrants uh, behind him so that's not at the moment looking likely to change it's all in the hands of Lewis Kent he has to be proactive about this now he can't wait for something to happen to James Turkington. He has to try and make it happen himself. Again, Alex Morgan drives a bit defensively into, uh, into Coppice. Oh, they're changing the background. Turkington's ahead of... Uh, or if we lost the team hard car, Coggan possibly has... Yes, dropped even further back. Lost two more places to Turkington and Neil on the previous lap. So James Turkington then is now into seventh place. Lewis looking to the inside again. Just can't do it. There goes... Lewis and Wilson, then the next car behind them is now James Turkington, albeit about four seconds behind at this stage. Across the line they go, Lewis Kent closer than ever into Redgate Corner, has to go for it, does go for it, but can he stop the car this time around? He's got a better chance, I think, through Redgate Corner, and he goes through. Can Alex Morgan get the switch back, though? He might be able to. Brilliant racing here, and fair play to Alex Morgan for getting stuck in here. He doesn't have to roll over and let Lewis Kent go through. In the end, though, Lewis forces the issue, gets all out of shape through the grainer curves, but he is now into third place overall. That does not affect his points tally, though. He needs to catch and pass Adam Morgan. One more position is all it will take, but Adam Morgan was about two and a half seconds or so in front of them at the start of the lap, and they've had a bit of side-by-side -side running now since then. Alex Morgan also is not content just to sit behind Lewis Kent at this stage, so he uh, is uh, really harrying him. Darren Wilson is ahead of Darren Lewis now, so Wilson also is... Now, could, could Wilson catch Lewis Kent? Possibly doubtful now that Kent's got another car between them, but Darrell Wilson has been lapping a little bit quicker, or at least as quick as Lewis Kent recently. Kent, though, now is starting to make a break, isn't he? So we now turn our attention to the time on the screen. Can he do it? Can he catch Adam Morgan in the next seven and a quarter minutes plus a lap? There's your race leader, Henry Neal, then. A new fastest lap last time around for Henry Neal, 111.158. Adam Morgan is 2.9 behind him, and six tenths slower that time. Lewis Kent... 2.8, so 2.8 seconds is the starting point then uh, at the start of the 14th lap of the race between Adam Morgan in the lead of TCR UK and Lewis Kent second place in TCR UK. If he wins it right now, as it stands, he would win the championship, but if he finishes second where he is at the moment, he would not. It's as simple as that for Lewis, and I'm sure the team will be on the radio explaining all of this to him. Hopefully not in too much detail though, because that can prove distracting for some drivers. But Lewis is absolutely on it. The body language of that Hyundai is telling us that he is le wait, leaving nothing now in reserve. This is maximum attack. He needs a sequence of qualifying laps now to get onto the turns with the Cupra and then hope he's got enough tyres and brakes left to actually do something about him, knowing as well that that Cooper is being run for by the same team that are running his big championship rivals car. So Adam Morgan is going to be even harder, arguably, to overtake than Alex was. And Alex, well, it took Lewis 
over half pace to make that move stick. Here we come then, first chance to analyse the lap times. Another new fastest lap for Henry Neal. We can sort of disregard him though for now. Morgan does a 1.11.7, Kent a 1.11.5, so he was two tenths quicker. 2.6 is the margin now between the two of them. But that's not really enough, he needs more than that. There aren't enough laps left for that to do it for him, I don't think. In other news, by the way, we've got Turkington and Neal together for seventh place. James has been caught by Will Neal now in uh, the car raced by Will's father, Matt, in the BTCC this year. And there they go. Anyone that's been at Brands Hatch in recent weeks will know why I'm suddenly nervous, because the Turkingtons and Neals have had a bit of history of late. Not necessarily these Turkingtons and Neals, but uh, we have seen the odd uh, disagreement, shall we say, over the years between uh, those two families. But uh, racing families with, with racing in the blood and sons that are now starting to sons or your brothers in Turkington's case that are starting to make a name for themselves. But James has made a mistake and Will Neal might be up the inside into Coppice Corner. Will Neal, is he going to go through? I think he will. And James sensibly doesn't fight it too hard. That was not a TCR car. It's OK. No points lost. A bit more ground loss to the cars in front. But frankly, James isn't showing much prospect right now of catching the cars in front anyway. Maybe he can tag along behind Will and do that to his advantage. Through they come then through the chicane, avoiding the barriers. Nice, sensible drive this from James Turkington. And that's all that's needed, really, at the moment. As long as Lewis Kent doesn't find a way past Adam Morgan. He was half a second quicker than Morgan that time, though. So the gap now does start to jump down. 2.1 seconds between the top two in TCR UK. And they're not together yet, but they're getting together. And I think by the end of the race, at that rate of progress, he will catch it. Can't afford to slip though, it has to be minimum half a second a lap realistically because he's still over two seconds back. So, and there are probably about four laps left. How many laps did he get in in race one? It was a 17 lap up. So actually we might get a couple more this time because we've, uh, we had a safety guard, didn't we, in the first race, that's why. This will be a longer race and that will take its toll on tyres as well, particularly for the heavier cars, Adam Morgan being one of them. 12 car here of uh, Josh Coggan starting to come on strong in the second half of the race as well, as he did in race one. Third of the second, I should say, of the team hard, BW Passat. Paul Taylor, his teammate, is further back still. Henry Neal back through, still in the low 111s at the moment. This time around, Morgan does a personal best and is two tenths quicker than Lewis Kent significantly. So Lewis, on that lap, I don't know if there was a mistake because he didn't improve his time. It wasn't, uh, yeah, it was about half a second slower than his previous lap as well. So Lewis's ultimate pace is better than Adam Morgan's, but it's it's a case of whether or not he can consistently run this pace. And right now, he can't, or at least on that lap he couldn't. So Adam Morgan a little bit more secure now. In second place overall, and the leading TCR class, Lewis still locking up, still flinging the car in. He's probably the most spectacular driver to watch on the grid, to be honest. And that's why he has generated, as Brim was saying, on the grid, a nice fan following these days as the youngster. Who has been getting more and more involved in Hyundai's TCR programme internationally as well. Did some nice uh, international testing over the winter where he got to go and uh, test with Gabrielli Tarquini, amongst others. Reigning World Touring Car Champion. Outgoing World Touring Car Champion, it would seem now, but uh, at the age of 50, Gabrielli was able to go win the 2018 WTCR Championship and then literally within a few weeks was uh, giving this young man some advice as they were pounding around racetracks over in mainland Europe. And that definitely has helped. Lewis, as I said on the grid, has been uh, a changed man this year, much more mature, much more consistent, level-headed, and it's carried into on within the verge of the TCR UK Championship, but maybe not quite close enough. He took back the two tenths that he lost a previous on the previous lap to Adam Morgan on that occasion. So the gap's back down to 2.1 now, but we only have two minutes plus one lap to go. So we should get another two laps in plus the extra one. So I reckon three laps remaining in the championship, maybe two. We'll see what it's like when the leaders get wrapped around, how long's left on the clock. As soon as the clock ticks down to zero, that becomes the penultimate lap, whatever lap they're on then. Have that extra one at the end. Uh, ends up being about a 25 minute race, give or take. Up the hill goes Adam Morgan then, turns into Coppice. Lewis Kent not visibly closer on this lap, so even if he is taking time out of Adam, it's not really significant enough right now. And, uh, Adam Morgan, with the headlights are blazed still on that beautifully prepared Sicily Motorsport uh, Cupra. He's not able to keep up with the race lead right now, not just really concern him. Potentially, pick up a double TCR UK victory on his debut in the championship. Wilson then out of the chicane, followed by Darren Lewis, and then it should be 
Will Neal and James Turkington, which it is. Turkington may come under pressure from Josh Coggan towards the end. Nick Halstead, by the way, is being given a time penalty uh, for we know not what, but I assume track limits. And also, actually, Darren Lewis being warned about track limits. So that time penalty that may be um, given to Halstead here will further release the pressure from Turkington. Knows that even if Halstead were to catch him, it might not be a position that would change on the official results. 40 seconds left then. The gap, by the way, came down by another two tenths. Uh, Morgan to Ken, who it, it's sort of a win it or bin it attitude now, isn't it? He, if he doesn't, if he can't catch Morgan and he can't get past him, he'd almost rather end the race in the gravel trap because at least then he knows he's given it everything he can. But uh, Lewis Ken may just come up one position too short. That's all it comes down to. One position on the track. One more overtake, which sounds so easy when you say it, but of course it really isn't. Right, Henry Neal's gone through onto another lap with about 11 seconds left on the clock and uh, he will be uh, therefore onto his penultimate lap now because the time only well, two seconds will tick down to zero. Then you get the extra lap. So this will be the penultimate lap of the race. Lewis Kent gap goes back out again now by a tenth. It's just sort of they're matching each other. They're trading tenths, but that's not enough really. It's nowhere near enough actually. He needs to find two seconds in two laps now which and then overtake Adam Morgan, which will not be the work of a moment. James Turkington did a personal best last time around, 111.5, which actually is only a couple of tenths off Lewis's ultimate pace. So I really don't think that we've seen a full attack here from James Turkington. I think he's been, he knew that it was an uphill struggle for Lewis. If Lewis was going to win the championship, he had to go on the attack and James could just sort of settle in and let the race come to him. I don't think at any point we've seen James driving at 100% in this race, because imagine if he had a started getting stuck in the early stages, started trying to keep up with Lewis, and then something went wrong and he was out of the race. If that was the case, then he's handling the championship on a platter to Lewis Kent. So whilst it looks as though James Turkington is significantly slower than Lewis in this race, I don't think that's necessarily the entire truth of the matter. Between the chicane, they come then. This is it. One more lap. One more lap of the 2019 TCR UK season. What is the gap? I think it's come down this time, possibly. Morgan does an 11.7, Kent an 11.3. So 1.6 seconds is all there is between them. But surely not. Surely Lewis can't get there in time. He will give it absolutely everything, though, on this final lap. If he can just get within striking range, make a lunge, force a mistake out of Adam Morgan, anything's possible. And this is it. This is the only man standing between Lewis Kent and the championship. He needs to finish ahead of this man and win the race in TCR, otherwise it ain't good enough. I just think he's going to run out of laps, out of the old hairpin they go. Then Henry Neal, by the way, is seven and a half seconds clear of these two, so he's going to win the race outright and take the, uh, the TCT honours once again and win the unofficial, if you like, uh, TCT uh, championship. There is a, a point system that's been put in place by the organisers, an imaginary one almost, to see who would have won the Touring Car Trophy if there were points available, and that man would have been Henry Neal, so he'll get a nice big trophy at the end of the weekend. <laughs> Lewis Kent flashing the lights, everything he's got now. If you look closely, you'll probably see him throwing the kitchen sink out of the window in a moment, but I don't think he's going to get there in time. Henry Neal, though, is a winner once again in the Dunlop Touring Car Trophy. He sees the chequered flag first. What's going on behind? It is going to be very close in the end, but Adam Morgan gets the TCR class victory. And Lewis Kent misses out on the championship by eight tenths of a second. Alex Morgan comes home in fourth with Daryl Wilson in fifth. Then it's uh, Will Neal, who at some point there towards the end got himself ahead of Josh Coggan. And then James Turkington. And James Turkington, by our reckoning, is your 2019 TCR UK champion in incredibly line, tense fashion. The Sicily Motorsport team, now it starts to sink in and uh, they can start to congratulate each other, they can start to breathe, which they probably haven't done for about 25 minutes. And James Turkington, likewise, the relief will be pouring over him now. And whilst it may not have been the sensational sort of weekend that he had at Brands Hatch last time with a double race victory, he wasn't able to recreate his win from Donington Park here earlier on in the season either, but it was enough by five points to unofficially wrap up the 2019 championship and add his name alongside that of Dan Lloyd's name. And well, Dan's gone on to compete internationally in, off in the Far East in TCR competition this year with a decent level of success. What now waits in uh, James Turkington's future? Will he maybe follow his brother's footsteps into BTCC or does he see TCR as maybe the more viable career path? Well, here is the result then. Henry Neal with the win by seven and a half seconds in the end with a relatively light car for that final race. That's sort of to be expected. It was a great drive though, as he 
to have carved his way through the order. Adam Morgan is second and wins in TCR UK, so he gets the 25 points. Lewis Kent for second scores 18 points. Uh, and that, in the end, is not quite enough. Alex Morgan is in fourth position, fifth Daryl Wilson, sixth Will Neal, and James Turkington in seventh place. Only just held on to that seventh place, though, from Josh Coggan at the end. Darren Lewis, likewise, was right behind him, actually. Those three were very close together at the flag, with Nick Halstead in tenth. Henry Neal, then, a race winner in the Touring Car Trophy. He was quite happy with that, I think. And also, uh, the private battle between himself and his brother, which we haven't made much of this weekend because of the issues that Will had in the that, yeah, Will had in the first race with that first lap off. But uh, Henry, I'm sure, will be bragging about this. He beat his brother in actually older machinery. This is a 2018 spec NGTC Honda Civic, whereas Will actually had a 2019 car. But, uh, they're both very rapid drivers. They've raced together in the Challenge before as well. And uh, Henry happy with the win in his class and another overall win in the Touring Car Trophy. Gets the congratulations from the crowd that have gathered down at the end of the pit lane. There's Lewis Kent, who hangs the steering wheel up and shrugging the shoulders. Couldn't have done anything more. He drove a good race there, did Lewis. And, uh, he didn't say he didn't try anything dirty, didn't try anything desperate. It was just a good, clean race. He bided his time. He could have been a lot more aggressive with Alex Morgan, actually, um, knowing that Alex wouldn't want to damage that nice, shiny McGann, but he's really just testing this weekend as a, a last minute entry. <laughs> Matt Neal, Father Matt, and Grandfather Steve. That's a lovely moment there. Three generations of the Neal family, all of them successful racers in their own right, actually. Steve, of course, retired from racing a few years ago to run the Team Dynamics squad, which uh, his son Matt now is at the helm. I believe, though, we can get right down in there and experience the emotion firsthand, thanks to uh, Bryn Lucas, who is down there with our podium finishers. You have that very, very happy Neil, Henry Neil over here, just uh, catch up loads of people. Henry, a quick chat with you, uh, and speak to your dad in a bit as well, because he knows what his feelings like. But it's so good to see you at the sharp end again in TCT. It was a really hard-fought race. Yeah, I um, obviously, we were not, not as much weight as in the first race, and... So we had eight kilos, and I knew the top three boys were going to be struggling um, with the weight. So I just sort of managed to get a brilliant start, got past the two, two, two team hard cars at the start. Had a bit of a contact with, I think it was Coggin at the start, thought it was all over, held onto it, got away. And uh, yeah, just sort of picked them off one by one. Just absolutely stoked, mate. Thanks to all the Dynamics boys. And it's nice after the first race to, you know, give them this. So for, to end your day, it must be quite nice, particularly race one not going to plan. Yeah, definitely. As soon as race one finished, I was just fired up and I wanted to get going straight again, straight away. So, yeah, absolutely buzzing. You mentioned the team. Your old man's obviously got a lot of experience in this sort of thing. What's he said to you? He's stoked. He's, he's happy. My dad and my granddad are here and all the family, mom, girlfriend, everyone, all, all my mates, schoolmates and that. So it's really nice, you know, to win in front of all of them. And it's nice to win the last, the last round. Of course, having your brother out on track as well, that's an unusual one. I know you've raced before quite a lot of times in the minis, but being out here, both in your dad's old cars as well. Oh, mate, if you'd, you'd have told me when I was 14, 15 that one day me and my brother would be racing touring cars that my dad my dad used to race I'd have told you to bugger off <laughs> I can't believe it it's absolutely mega just even on the warm-up lap just behind Will in, in the old man's touring car was special so to get the win is extra special you're getting quite a good collection of trophies as well so well done yeah <laughs> cheers bro thanks well done, nice one well then, let's go and find a Morgan shall we can we find Adam Morgan is he around no Adam Morgan's gone so we'll try oh here he is sorry Adam how you doing uh, I couldn't see you for looking so second place that was a really really good performance especially when you think of the overall pick of the championship yeah um, you know we knew we wanted to get James up to, to the championship that was our goal uh, and I was carrying a bit of weight so I knew it was gonna be a bit of a challenge but I thought go out there 60 kg hopefully James and Alex have a battle which they did uh, and as a result of that you know I was able to get a gap you know Lewis was catching me up you know he was really on the money this weekend and and, and fair play to him but uh, it's a tough race but Cicely Moe's board done a fantastic job. We, we did what we set out to do. Uh, I think James has won the championship, which is brilliant news. That's what we wanted. So uh, as, as days goes, it's a pretty good one. What are your overall impressions of the TCT and TCR, being the first time you've jumped out in the car here? Uh, really good, to be honest. Yeah, I and mean, the cars are really compliant. You can jump into them and, and just sort of 
hit the ground running straight from the off. You know, they're, they're a, a, a good bit of kit, and uh, I really enjoyed today. You know, it, it, it makes it all a bit sweeter when, when you have a day like today and you have a championship. James and our team's won the championship, and we've had a team's championship as well, so it makes the day a lot better, but uh, well done, pal. Nice one, mate. Well done as well. Thank you very much. And it's all about well done. That was a very tricky thing for you because you couldn't do anything. You're a passenger, really, while everything else was going on around you. And Lewis, we're going to come to in just a bit. He was putting on an absolute stormer there. Yeah, I knew what I had to do. I knew you just had to finish in front of a couple of TCR cars and we had it in the bag. So, yeah, kept a level head. And I saw Will was catching on the Honda. It's like, I don't want to get involved on, on the go. So, yeah, the, delighted, absolutely over the moon. The, the guys at Sicily. Brilliant job all year. We, we struggled today with the weight, but yeah, the outcome's been mega. It's useful having Adam Morgan on your team as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's been good. It's been a good, good benchmark to, to gain against and to learn from. So yeah, all credit to Adam too. It's been a big week for the Turkington family. Yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks and yeah, couldn't have gone much better either day. So yeah, chuffed. Now, going into this race, did you think it was going to be yours or was it, did you allow yourself to dream? I, I knew what I had to do and you had to stay out of trouble in the first couple of laps and, and keep a couple of TCR cars behind me and that's, yeah, that's what we were able to do. So yeah. Can't believe it. And finally, what were your thoughts when Daryl was coming around near you? I, was, I, knew, I knew Nick was still behind me, so I was like, Daryl, on you go. It's got to up a bit of a fight, but yeah, it wasn't worth all the risk. It, like, you could lose everything for one, one stupid move. So it all changed, though, if Adam had uh, managed to lose that place to Lewis. I, did, I, I wasn't aware of that, so yeah, no, fair play. Well done. Congratulations, the second ever TCR UK champion. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm fair play to Lewis as well. He drove a blinder all weekend with the ballast as well, so fair play to Lewis. Well, I'm joking. Thank you. We mentioned Lewis. We better speak to him as well. Now, Lewis, I know that you're going to be feeling pretty downbeat, I'd imagine, but there's no need to. You put on one heck of a battle. Yeah, yeah. We've we tried our best to put all that we can into it. Um, congratulations, James. Couldn't think of anyone better to win it. So, uh, no, second second place. Still, still did a very good year. I think we have the most amount of wins through the year, most amount of fast slaps, all the rest of it. So. Um, from our end, it wasn't a bad year. Couldn't thank any of the boys enough for all, for the car they've given to me. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit disappointed to come down that close, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to see uh, see what next year brings, and hope that it uh, goes a bit better. Well, I just think this time last year, it, a lot has changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We went we went from a mid-running car to a front-end car, so we're happy with that, and uh, yeah, I, I, we're just going to have to keep our head down, do a lot of testing over winter, and see if we can improve even more. I don't think any words are going to make you feel any better, but it was amazing watching this season. So well done. Thank you very much. There we go, Lewis Kent finishing second overall in TCR UK. You can hear that there's some action going on behind right now. So we're going to go over to the Porsche Championship now. This one here is a 40-minute race. It's, I think, currently underway, so it's time for me to hand over to our race commentator for this one. Back to the man, Andy McEwen. Thank you very much, Bryn. Well, I hope you'll understand, everyone. We, we missed the start of this race because we wanted to stick with the 